come into the office anytime. We've got a stockpile. Oh, I know. Chloe's, Chloe's office. Thank you, Chloe's Chloe. Got some good stuff. There is plenty right now in the clerk's office. <laughs> that means yeah. I have to walk over there to make it worth it. Perfect. Can you see yeah. my office? Oh. <laughs> oh wow. Let's see. Oh. oh, we'll be there tomorrow, Nikki. Well, Larry will oh, be there tomorrow. Wow. What's that all about, Nikki? That's our event tomorrow. Oh, I didn't know you were having an event. Cheap yeah. The well, smell of sugar has taken over my room. The sugar event. <laughs> Are you gonna announce it? Do I stop coming? Oh I can. Yeah, that'd be too. great. No, oh, I don't want a lot of people there. <laughs> well, now we know. How's that? And is someone going to announce the trunk or treat? What? And do you got that one? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. <clears throat> okay, let's do it. There's lots to talk about, so let's start. Uh, Larry, oh, Larry, are you here? Yes, I will uh, start the webinar. All right, we are live. Welcome everyone to our Capitola City Council regular meeting. Um, before we get started, Chloe has a few words to share. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Hello and welcome to the Capitola City Council meeting in accordance with California Senate Bill 361. This meeting is not physically open to the public. Council and staff are meeting via Zoom and there are several ways for the public to watch and to participate. Information on how to join the meeting using the Zoom application or a landline or mobile phone, along with how to submit public comment during the meeting tonight, is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, and on the published meeting agenda. The public can also live stream the meeting on our website. As always, the meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being re recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Our technician this evening is Alice. Thank you so much, Alice, and thank you, Mayor Brooks. Thanks, Chloe, and thank you, Alice. I'd also like to introduce Christina Burroughs, who will be sitting in for our city attorney, Samantha Zettler, who is not with us this evening. And if you can all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to now move on to item two on our agenda this evening, and that's a report out on closed session. Christina, would you like to report out, please? Thank you, Mayor Brooks. The City Council met in closed session for a conference with labor negotiators. Uh, council gave direction to the negotiators and no reportable action was taken. Thank you so much and nice to see you here. Okay, item three is for additional materials. Do we have any additional materials? Uh, no, Mayor Brooks, we did not receive any this for this meeting. And any uh, for item four, additions or deletions to the agenda? I will note that we distributed a revised agenda on Monday. The only change between the revised agenda and the original agenda was the film permit ordinance was originally on consent. And the revised agenda it is on as item 8E on tonight's agenda for discussion of, in, during general government. Great. Thanks so much, Jamie. Now for item five, oral communications. This allows time for members of the public to address city council on any item that's listed on consent um, or any topic within the jurisdiction of the city that is not on our general government or public hearing section of tonight's agenda. Do we have anyone in the audience or who has sent in an email that would like to, to address council this evening? Mayor Brooks, I have a Eduardo Santana. You can, there we go. Hi, good evening. Thank Hi. you for, um, thank you for giving me this opportunity and good to see you all. Um, I, um, as you know, my name is Eduardo Santana, as you heard. Uh, I'm the program manager for Project Scout and Project Scout provides free tax services for seniors, disabled, low-income families and individuals in the city of Capitola 
has done so for many years. Uh, I want to thank you for your consideration of our community grant request, and I wanted to provide you just a quick example of the work we do. Just recently, I helped a Mr. H. Uh, he's a 60-plus uh, client that was assisted by Scout right before the October 15th deadline to file for California for the stimulus of $600. He is a living in-home supported service provider living in Capitola. Not only did Eduardo, he Eduardo, I'm so sorry to interrupt you this evening. We will be um, reviewing our community grant applications um, on item 8D. It is on our general government, and you will have the opportunity to address Council at that time, if you can hold off on your comments, um, this is just for things that are not on tonight's agenda. Uh, my apologies. Thank you. Okay. We'll talk to you in a few. Okay. Anyone else who'd like to address Council regarding consent or items that are not on tonight's agenda? Mayor Brooks, I do not see any other attendees with their hands up, and I do not have any emails for this topic. Okay. So we're now going to move on to item six. This is staff and city council comments. Let's start with staff this evening. You sound far away, Jamie. We can't hear you. Two announcements from our staff this evening. Go ahead, Nick. Okay. All right. Uh, Capitola Recreation will be hosting a Halloween movie event. Um, here at the Jade Street Park Community Center. We will be showing the movie Goonies, and we will be hosting a Halloween uh, costume contest for anybody of 12 and under. All youth in, in attendance will be receiving a goodie bag, uh, compliments of the chamber, and uh, we will be hosting that costume contest in three categories, and winners will receive a prize. So please arrive at 6 p.m., Notify staff if you are interested in the costume contest and then enjoy the movie, which will be outside on the softball um, field and in open air. We hope to see everybody there. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> good evening. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, the police department, along with the uh, Santa Cruz County Probation Department and the Santa Cruz County District Attorney's Office, is going to do a drive-through trunk or treat event down at uh, the Watsonville Fairgrounds. Uh, it's the Santa Cruz County Fairgrounds down in Watsonville. The address is 2601 East Lake Avenue in Watsonville, and we're going to be down there between 3:30 and 7 p.m. Uh, with our department, with the other agencies, with a drive-through uh, event for the kids. So we're really looking forward to it. Again, anyone that can show up down there will be down there with a couple of our, of our officers and some volunteers, and it'll be a really good event tomorrow. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from staff? Okay, let's move on to council comments. Would any council members like to share? Vice Mayor Story. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. I just wanted to make a request for our future agenda item. Um, as many of you may be aware, the city of Santa Cruz is taking steps to uh, limit and restrict the number of RVs um, on their streets. Um, and I would like um, our staff to give us a presentation at one of our future meetings about the particulars of, uh, of that particular ordinance um, and also maybe a report from Chief Valley about um, the, any issues that we may have experienced or can anticipate to experience uh, due to the actions that the City of Santa Cruz is taking. So that's my request. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Story. Councilmember Bertrand. Councilmember, you're muted. Oh, did you change your mind? Okay. <laughs> Likely I can read faces and hand gestures there. Any other council members? Okay. I'd just like to share that on November 9th, I'll be having a another town hall uh, meeting, and our special guest for that evening will be County Santa Cruz County Superintendent Dr. Ferris Faba, who will be talking about the um, vaccine opportunities for students 5 to 11 and um, other updates regarding the school districts in Santa Cruz County. 
And I also would like to add, um, to bring back for, for an item on the agenda too, um, about memberships. If you recall during the pandemic, uh, the beginning of the pandemic, we, uh, cut all discretionary funding, one of them being memberships. Um, and so I'd like for that to come back and, and have council decide on whether we'd like to re-enter some of those um, agreements with our community partners. Okay, so with that, we'll move on to item seven for consent. So all items listed as consent will be enacted in one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion unless one of you would like to pull the item and that will be addressed at the end of tonight's regular um, general government item. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll move the consent. Okay. Uh, for, uh, a first from Council Member Bertrand to approve item 7 through I. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a first and a second. May I have a roll call, please? Council Member Bertrand. I approve. Council Member Kaiser. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Okay, that item passes unanimously. And now we'll move on to items eight for general government and public hearings. Our first item is A for donations report 2021. And I see Mr. Melberg logging on. It's been a while since we've seen you. Yep, hopefully I can get this one correct finally after 19 months. Um, <laughs> so I just want to give a, a, a brief report on our donations and grants that we received during fiscal year 2021. So give me a moment to share my screen. Okay. All right, can everybody see that okay? Yes. Okay. So um, as we're all well aware, the city capital benefits greatly from the generosity of individual citizens, local businesses, nonprofit agencies, as well as other um, public agencies. And in July of 2013, we implemented our donations policy, which is administrative policy 3-15, which allows the city manager to accept and appropriate donations or grants of $5,000 or less to support existing projects and programs. And it also established the procedure for acknowledging and reporting on those donations. Um, so as far as the donations during fiscal year 2021, um, well, we did receive a little over 2.4 million in donations and grant funding. As far as the uh, donations that were values of 5,000 or less, we were just under uh, 39,000. The, the first one there says, <clears throat> excuse me, 27,000. So that was um, $3,000 that came in monthly. It was <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, nine months this year, three months in the prior year, and that um, grant was given and could only be used for the PD canine program. So that was, uh, we retired a PD canine officer and have a new one that we brought in and got trained in that, that grant helps tremendously with that, or donation, I'm sorry. Um, we got about six, a little over $6,800 in various museum donations, which was pretty good since the museum was, was down most of last year, um, or during the fiscal year. We also got $1,000 for Junior Guard scholarships from the Junior Guard Parents Club, uh, 2250 for Junior Guards and Camp Capitola scholarships, which was used for registration fees from the Public Safety Foundation, uh, 1730 for the Esplanade Water Fill Station, which was donated by Matt and Jill Arthur. Um, on the, the grant side of things, we got uh, 2.3, we received 2.39 million in grant funding consisting of just under 43,000 for the 41st Avenue Adaptive Control Project, which is getting ready to, well, we're trying to work with Caltrans on that. That came from the Monterey Bay Air Resources District. We received um, just under $1,600 from the U.S. Tennis Association as a recreation grant, and that was used to buy some uh, three custom rule signs, uh, uh, touchless hand sanitizer, a bench, and an outdoor bulletin board. We also received a little over 500,000 from the Santa Cruz County RTC for the Brower Street project. If you remember, that was a complete street project, um, and that one came out really well. We um, just under 198,000 for Park Avenue storm damage from California Department of Transportation, and then $300,000 from 
uh, for community power resiliency from the state of California that will be programming towards a city hall solar project that we hope to kick off here in the near future. We received $7,500 as a safety grant from our insurance um, JPA and Beja, which we use for COVID safety equipment. We received 5000 for a recycling grant from the state of California. That's an annual grant. And um, even though with COVID going on, we were still, they still funded that grant, so we we're happy about that. Uh, 10112 on the local hazard mitigation plan came from FEMA. That total grant was actually around 42, 43,000. This was just the last piece that came in during 2021. The other 32,000 or so came in in the prior year. We received um, just under 125,000 in CARES Act funding from the federal government, which was um, really used to reimburse for COVID-related public safety expenditures. We had, during the time frame that the CARES Act was applied to, we had about $400,000 to $425,000 of expenses, so this helped offset some of those COVID-related public safety expenses. And we received um, just under $1.2 million of American Rescue Plan funding from the federal government. Um, that is coming in in two installments, so we got the first installment we actually received it in July, but our instructions was to, were to um, book it back to fiscal year 2021. So we'll have 1.2 this year, and we should receive another 1.2 around July of um, 2022. And that's for COVID revenue replacement. And currently, we have um, all but $50,000 of that program to the WARF project. If you recall last year, we normally program um, a lot of our Measure F funding towards beach and wharf projects, and we didn't do that. We cut that out when we uh, were cutting all of the non-discretionary uh, expenditures last year. So we replaced that funding that we would have gotten normally that would have been programmed out there. And we also um, used $50,000 programmed for a van, transportation van for recreation. We're still trying to find a van that'll work for us, but we have that money sitting there for that. And then finally, um, the Friends of the Capitola Library, if you recall, they began raising funds uh, before we started construction of the library in November of 2018. And they've raised over $600,000, which is pretty impressive. And that's net uh, their fundraising expenses. They had about, I want to say, thirty-five or $36,000 of expenses that they incurred to, to raise those funds. And that's the, it's a little over, I want to say, 601 of net. But what um, staff is planning on doing is coming back with a complete report for the library fundraising campaign where we can recognize the friends for all of their efforts as well as um, th there probably had to be over a couple hundred donors between just straight donations and the paper project. There was a lot of donations. So we'd like to do that when we return to in-person meetings. And that actually completes my report. And the recommended action is just to receive the report. But I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have Great. Any questions from Council? Okay. Seeing no questions, we can take this to public comment. So I'll open this up for public comment. If you'd like to make a comment, send an email now to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Or to speak, please raise your hand now by clicking on reactions down below then clicking raise hand in your Zoom application. Or by dialing star nine or star six on your landline or mobile phone, our moderator will unmute you and you will have about three minutes to speak. Mayor Brooks, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised on this item and I, we do not have any emails on this item. Okay. So we'll bring this back to Council for further comments and, and a vote. Right, this one needs a vote, because even though it's just to receive, no, I'm seeing, I need some clarity. Justina, Jamie, somebody? So this item is on your, um, on your agenda to just receive and file the report. So I think action would be to uh, receive the donations and contribution report. Okay, so we do need a motion to accept staff recommendations to receive the report. Councilmember I'll Peterson. Uh, I'll move the staff recommendation to receive this report. Yeah, I'll second. 
Okay, we have a first and a second from Vice Mayor Story. May I have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Bertrand. Aye. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you. Just Thank you. keeping staff on their toes tonight. Um, so thanks, Jamie, for jumping in there. Um, Councilmember Peterson. Yeah, I just wanted to share before we move on to the next item that I am an uncompensated director on the Community Action Board, so I will be recusing myself. Okay. Council Member Peterson will be stepping away. Vice Mayor Story. Just as a point of order, I thought um, we were going to do the STEM ordinance under 8B. Did I we hear that, that wrong? Um, 8E. E. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I did mm -hmm. hear that wrong. Um, well, with that, I will also uh, announce that uh, I have a conflict um, on the, the uh, grant applications of the Community Action Board. As, uh, my spouse is an employee of the Community Action Board, so I will as well refuse myself. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Story. So we've noted Vice Mayor Story has stepped away and Council Member Peterson. We'll just wait. We'll wait, uh, Vice Mayor Story, for you to step away from your screen. It's so tricky to do this virtually. We'll see you later. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over to staff. It looks like Mr. Lorenz, this is you. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Brooks. Let me share my screen. You can see it. See it okay? Um, yes, now we can. Great. So um, this is a report on, or the staff report or presentation on the community grant program, specifically the community action board. Um, this is a, we're taking the community grant program and, and we have three different items following up, but I kind of want to give the overall, um, what's the situation. So city council approved the community grant program as part of the fiscal year 21-22 budget. Um, there are two pieces of funding, $125,000 from the general fund and approximately 49,000 from as a dedicated percentage of the transitory occupancy tax for youth and childhood programs. This was, uh, Part of the uh, the the vote for the tax, um, the subcommittee met um, over Zoom, and they recommended the following: um, base increases of seven percent for programs funded in 2019-2020, which was the last full um, grant cycle. Um, also, the community grant program, um, or your grant subcommittee, excuse me, uh, recommended additional increases for some agencies based on program specifics, the community need. Um, as well as COVID-19 impacts. Um, in addition, the subcommittee recommended providing some funding for programs that had not been funded in the previous cycle. So the Community Action Board of Santa Cruz County, CAB, um, is considered separately, as you mentioned, due to remote interests of um, uh, two council members. Um, the request was for $7,500 for the rental assistance program. But I want to also point out that in the 21-22 uh, city, city budget, the city council approved a $1,500 amount that is separate um, from the community grant program for the rental assistance program. Um, so that's in addition to whatever um, the, they, the CAB gets approved for in the, in the community grant program. So the subcommittee recommendation for community action board is a 7% increase um, from 2019-2020 which would mean $1,567 from the general fund funding, not for the dedicated youth and childhood programs. And this is from the general fund for CAB. Um, so at this point, um, I believe council member Bertrand would like to kind of go over the process and the background for these recommendations. Is that correct? Sure, um, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, I'm here. So um, 
Commissioner uh, Kaiser and myself met um, via Zoom, as you mentioned, and we did review uh, the various programs, and in particular for the community action. Um, but basically, uh, we thought that um, part of our process right now is to review how we give grants, and that has been suspended because of COVID. And so we thought in terms of the 7% so that we're consistent with our past actions. Uh, basically, that's designed to be cost as, um, you know, cost increase because of um, rising costs basically for anything. And then the next thing is we didn't want to make big judgments and big steps right now because we still need to see what the, the city council will guide us in terms of uh, process and policy. So that's for this coming year to decide. So Margo, I think uh, you want to make some comments too. Thank you. Yeah, um, that in a nutshell is sort of our approach here when um, coming up with how, how to move forward with different programs. Um, we, you know, we kind of to toyed with some numbers. 5% is where we started, and then we were like, okay, well, let's bump it up to 7. We have the budget, things like that. Um, I, I think um, as far as CAB goes, we um, were pretty – pretty set seeing as how we already have some of that money um, coming from the general fund that's already been approved. Um, and I'm sure we'll go over this again, uh, but just stating that moving forward, this may, we are sort of restructuring this program. So we are wanting to not dive head in with these large lump sums going into a new, new program for grants just to make sure that we are not starting at a, at a place that we can't really move forward from um, the next time around when we're, when we're restructuring this program. So that's um, kind of what we came up with. But again, like Jacques said, looking for feedback um, and, or questions if there are any. Thank you. I have one more comment to make. Um, should have mentioned this earlier. So we came up with um, still a surplus of funds from our general fund of uh, based on what we normally grant, and also the same for the youth fund. And noting that not many people applied for grants this time, it was, it was quite remarkable. Um, being that we've been in the pande pandemic, we thought we'd get more grants, and um, so we didn't. So we thought of a way to uh, push this back to uh, the COE to come up with programs that, um, excuse me, yeah, the COE. So the particular emphasis there would be education efforts for the youth of this community, since that is a major thing that we're pushing for is programs for youth. And then for the um, youth program itself, that would go back to staff to try to see if there are other programs, again, educationally focused for the youth. Okay. Um I don't have any questions yet for this particular item. I'll need some clarity when we get down to um, the bigger item, and we can talk more clearly about that. I do have some comments, but before we get to that point um, and a vote, we'll take this to public comment. So now this is the opportunity for our public to email at public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us or to speak, please raise your hand now by clicking on reactions, then clicking raise hand in your Zoom application, or by dialing star nine or six on your landline or mobile phone. Our moderator will unmute you. You will have up to three minutes to speak. And again, for our audience, this is just for the item for CAB and their particular grant request. Um, we will have an opportunity to address the other grant applications later. Larry, oh, there yes, you go. Mayor, Mayor Brooks, we have Boz Padilla. Okay. Oh. Good evening, Mayor uh, Councilman members. I am Boz Padilla, Director of the Community Action Board, Homeless and Prevention and Intervention Service, along with my colleague, Elizabeth Sanchez, Program Coordinator. We are pleased to be recommended for community grants funding for the year 2021-2022 funding cycle for CAP's rental assistance program. 
As you know, CAP has been the county's designated nonprofit anti-poverty agency for more, over 55 years, with rental assistance programming for over 30. We've had a long-standing partnership with the city of Capitola to provide rental assistance to avoid eviction and homelessness for the most vulnerable residents, including the low-income families with children, seniors, and disabled households. Typically, households come to us needing assistance due to changes in family composition, job loss, unexpected medical, or other critical household expenses. During the first year of the COVID pandemic, we saw a 50% increase in calls for rent assistance and ended up serving 10 capital households in 2020. In 2021 to date, CAB's RAP uh, rental assistance program has assisted six Capitola households with rent assistance, which benefited 18 people, including seven adults, 10 children, and one senior. CAB is also part of the local partner network to provide application assistance for local residents to apply for the federal state emergency rental relief through Housing is Key. One, house, one household assisted this year with the help of the city funds was a low-income Capitola senior and re recent widow who needed rent assistance due to the expenses associated with his wife, Assi. Thankfully, with the city's support, we were able to assist and support this gentleman and help him retain housing during such a difficult time. These are the types of heart-wrenching situations that we hear from community members. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support and collaboration to help vulnerable Capitola residents stay safely housed. For more information about CAP's rental assistance program for Capitola residents, please contact us at area code 831-457-1741. Okay, thank you so much for speaking. Any other Comments or emails from the Mayor Brooks, I do not see anyone else with their hands raised on this item and I do not have any emails. Okay, so we'll bring this back for further comments and a vote. Any comments from our council members? I think you guys said it all at the beginning. Okay, so what I'd like to share is, um, you know, after reviewing this, I most certainly hear what you're saying about the increase using the COLA um, kind of practice that we've done in the past. And um, what I'm deeply concerned about, though, is that we are seeing our community grant slowly diminish over time. And, and I'm talking about the big pot of money that council has um, started with when I began. So we started back in the day, gosh, shock, I mean, $250,000. And now we're only looking at, you know, the 125 or 150, whatever it was. And at this point, we're not even utilizing all those dollars. And that really concerns me because it comes out of our general fund. And the further we get away from utilizing those dollars that council prioritize on spending on community grants, the further we get away from supporting our social services. And that's always been a priority of mine. I know it's been a priority of Council Member Bertrand and the senior services and supporting um, a lot of the organizations here. And so even though there are other things in place, right, that we have this additional rental assistance program, we know that the rental assistance support sunsetted in, our, in the state and that we are going to see a, a huge influx of people needing more support. And that's what CAB does for our community. And so there's going to be a gap in time when um, from now, probably in the next couple of months, because it just sunsetted, that there's going to just be a higher demand for support. And so I would like to, to share that I think we should be funding all of our all of these requests because we can and that because that they ultimately are fulfilling these social um, these these needs in our community um, that that are just so important for for all members and because we also have the money you mentioned that there would be a leftover pool of funding um, even with your plan but even if we moved on to funding the entire program, all of the programs per requested, including this, this item here for CAB, we would still have extra money to utilize for other ideas. 
again, my major concern is that the further we get away from really say, using the funding for our community grants as stated, using the whole pot, and I understand people did not apply, but those who did are supporting the most vulnerable populations like CAP. So I would um, highly uh, recommend at this point that we kind of open this dialogue to see if you guys are open to um, fully funding CAB for what they've requested tonight, because that's the only item I can talk about for now. And then we can continue the conversation for the next item. I'd be open to hearing what your thoughts are. Council Member Kaiser. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Larry, do you have access to the um, the last year's amount and then the requested? And then... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let, for for that item, let me open. Let me let me do that. I don't have it separated out. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I should have no, thought of that earlier. That's okay. I can I can. Um, so the so you wanted the 2019 award was one thousand four hundred and sixty four dollars, and so and then the the, the this year was fifteen one thousand five hundred and sixty seven dollars. And what was the requested? Oh, I'm sorry. The request was for seven thousand five hundred. Oh, got it. Okay. I think this was Jacques. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. This is maybe one of the ones too that we had even thought about, um, even at least meeting like halfway on that request. Um, I don't. Uh... And what I would encourage, if I may, what mm -hmm. I would encourage you to think about is not this like meeting halfway. It's the bigger picture, the bigger picture of what the city of Capitola council members prioritize as our community grants funding. We said we are going to give this amount of money away. And from the looks of it, we've had these organizations step up go through the process. We know that they're fulfilling our community's needs. We know if there's 10 residents in Capitola who need rental assistance, $1,000 goes to one, you know, one month's rent. You multiply that by 10 as um, our presenter uh, spoke of, you know, mm -hmm. that's going to go much further and they're going to be able to support more. And then in addition to the pot of money that we have. So it's the bigger picture. It's, it's for me, it's not about Colas, and it's about what we prioritize as ex, uh, in in supporting our social services requests and needs in our community. And you know, I don't think our they should be at fault because they only got a little bit last time, and they're asking for more this time. And we are going to be implementing a process, and there everyone is very well aware of our process because we've been talking about it for so long, and and reaching out to um, partners to better our grants application. The county's doing something very similar. So in in um, response to your concerns of, well, they might not, they, they'll be super bummed, you know, if they don't get it all. They know it's coming. We've been talking about this for a long time and we'll have a better sense of measurement and goals and we'll be able to use that as a tool for next time. But right now we have the money. Who knows if this pandemic gets worse? Who knows if we don't have the funds for next year? We have them now, and I think we really need to um, step up and say, you know, we hear you. These are your needs, and we're, we're here to support your program. Okay. <laughs> I'll go ahead and make a, uh, I was going to make a motion, but I'll met, um, before I do, Council Member Bertrand. No, no, I hear you, Mayor, and um, I've been a part of multiple efforts to reallocate and um, how we do our uh, funds to community grants and such. And so we're again at another juncture, <laughs> basically. And um, yeah, there's, there's needs all over the place in this community as there is in any community. And the needs for CAB are um, in a way that's equally at the table as other needs. And 
The one thing that bothered me a lot was that it seemed very few people were made aware of our grant program and the applications were few. And it would also surprise me that, you know, a lot of people jumped up the requests considerably. Um, and the problem that I'm concerned about is how many people even knew about our process this time? And so that was the reason why we set aside these extra funds. They're not extra, they're part of our initial grant in the general fund so that we could reach out again to the community. There's other groups out there that would equally need the funds as CAB or any other group that actually needs to supply things that this community um, finds it hard to, to meet. Um, so in a sense, I'm not saying let's not give the money out. I have been fighting this battle for a long time against other people that were on the commission, excuse me, city council before your time. And it's just the process this time just seemed to have been short circuited the wrong way. And I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. So yes, I agree. You know, we've been supporting rent um, supplements. We do it in a variety of other programs, not just with CAB. And um, it does meet a good need, I have to admit. I don't disagree with that. But like I said, I, for some reason, I think a lot of groups were not informed properly about the monies that we have available. And I don't want to short circuit uh, the program so that these groups don't get it and other groups get quite a bit more. That just doesn't seem fair to me. The other thing is that I'm beginning, as I grow older, I'm beginning to think more in terms of um, paying things forward. So youth programs, whether it's for education, providing a step up for kids at the earlier stage in their life, which has been proven by multiple studies to be the best time to save families, um, the troubles that might occur if they don't have the funds and the resources at an early stage and, and the things that would develop in a child's life because those things are absent. And so, I'm thinking that that's something I'm going to push for. That's something I actually ran for when I ran for a city council last time to focus on youth and youth programs. And so I don't want to um, establish new, uh, how should I put this? New, uh, what is it? Um, well, the, let's go back in history. The, the way this program started was Everyone threw in something, you know, let's fund this for 5,000, let's fund this for 200, let's fund this for 10,000, whatever it was, you know, it wasn't part of all those things. And it became sort of a legacy. The Capitola just kept adding to each year, each year. And there was no real rationale, except that we all agreed that Capitola, we wanted to be a group that would support things in the community. So I don't want to jump in with the new set of legacy projects. <laughs> you know, I think that we made the bold move, um, I forgot how long ago it is now. Like you said, Mayor, we've been talking about this for a while, but we made the bold move to actually come up with the rationale for what we as the city of Capitola and the residents who put the money into our care want to have for this community. And these will come out of discussions that we'll have next year. And so that's why, you know, I felt comfortable with my recommendation. And um, that's sort yeah. of how I feel. And Yeah, I appreciate that. And um, what I'll just add before I make my motion is that, you know, we can't fault those who did apply, who asked for the money. We can't fault them for knowing about the availability for our NOFA, for our for our grants. We do this every year. Um, we, to your point, Council Member Bertrand, and, um, and I really appreciate you saying this about the students, we would still be able to fund. If we were to give everybody what they asked for, we still end up with a significant amount of money at the end of the day to continue 
to reach out to fund education programs to do whatever we want. There still is a significant amount of money left over even if we were to fully fund um, everyone's request. Um, so that's why I'm comfortable with making this motion today of saying let's fund them. We know there's a need. We know that the um, that the eviction notice or eviction uh, um, rental safety okay, clause from the state. Yeah. yeah, we know that it's sunsetted. We know that there's an immediate need in our community for our seniors, for our families. And if our families don't have houses, then there's going to be no kids to support. So um, this is just really important to me. It's really important for me to continue fighting to keep all of this money and to use it all because we've worked so hard. And thanks to your hard work, Council Member Bertrand, on doing this. Um, so that's why I'm comfortable with making this motion to fully fund CAB's request at 7500 So um, I'm going to make that motion tonight um, and ask that one of you support um, my request. Any other comments or questions about that? Council Member Kaiser? Thank you. Um, I was under the impression that if we gave the amount that we had allotted for grants would basically just be washed out as if we gave everybody everything that they're asking for. Right, like so it's 100, 125 and the total request amount if everyone got what they wanted was 89. So therefore there would be leftover money. Is that, Larry, you're shaking your head. I thought that's what I read. No, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm not sure where that, I'd have to go look. The the total request, I mean, I, I mean specifically, I don't know if we, the total amount was 169000 for all the requests. So the people um, that we're seeing on, and I have to be careful because we're only on CAB. On um, CAB, the, the request was 7500 so let me just ask this question. Are all of the applications that, let me ask this question because I believe I can ask this. I have to be careful, council members, just because of my conflict for the next item. Um, are all of the, did, did you as a subcommittee agree to fund all of the, re, or at some, to some degree, fund all of the requests, or some of them left off the table completely? Were some of them left no. off the table completely? Every, everything gets partial, um, everything gets 7% okay. for the old ones, and okay. then the new, the new ones do get so, money yeah. to start on their programs. So we, we did not deny people their requests, right. but maybe not up to the amount that they wanted. And okay, then, like so, I said, the other recommendation is that we actually look out there. There's a lot of programs of people that have equal issues as cabs that, you know, for some reason they didn't hear about it. So I, I like just want to make sure I'm not, I want to okay. make sure I have the right information though. So right. we had a, I, cause then I'm barking up the wrong tree. So forgive me. I know that we had a spreadsheet of information. Our budget was 125,000. Is that correct? Larry? 125,000. Yep. 125,000 for general fund and 49,000 from the okay. youth. So let's, let's not talk about the youth and youth programming. Let's just talk about the 125. And for all of the programs that requested funding, you add them all up and that totaled 89. No, I'm sorry. I, you know, the, the problem, I mean, I'm just going by the, the, there were more out in requests in the youth than there was funding availability. So the, the amount just in there is 62,000, but the amount requested that we have itemized as not youth programs is 106,956. So we had to make some choices, I, basically. I'm a little perplexed because, so 106,000 is in the regular community fund, or just the community grants, no kids. If we funded everyone what they asked for, it would be 106000 And so, is that correct, Larry? Yes, it, it, as, so as programs that we identified as not youth programs. Okay, right. so 125 minus 106 leaves 19000 18, yeah. Is that 19000 or 18000 it, It's actually closer to eighteen. 
because uh, it's okay. 9, 956. So if we funded everybody what they requested, including CAB at 7500, so I'm going to tread back lightly because, again, I'm, I'm trying to be careful here. So if we did that, that would leave $18,000 to go back in a notice of funding, availability, and NOFA to the community or whatever you guys were envisioning. We can talk about that later. I'm so comfortable with that amount of money. $18,000 is a lot of money to to continue to give to organizations that may or may not have known about this particular grant cycle. So that's a substantial amount. I mean, that funds a lot, that just funds nonprofits sometimes entire programs, you know, completely. So I'm comfortable with that. Is that enough clarity for, for our council members here? So Margo, that answers your question. So 106,000 if we were to do this, if I were to approve for CAP, if my motion, uh, if I receive a second on that, there would still be a conversation later and there would still be left over funding. Council Member Kaiser. I, I completely understand and I just think where I was coming from and I'm pretty sure where Jacques was coming from as well is if we're meeting all of these expected amounts or asked for amounts, where do we go from here in, in, in the long term, in, in the years to come? Sure. Is it setting us up for this position of like, oh, well, they had the money and we asked for this amount and they gave it right. to us and then the next year, whatever. So that that is where I I drag my heels a little bit. And, and so I don't know if that's just me being like, frugal or conservative, I'm not no. really sure. I just think that we were sitting there and we were looking at a big like spreadsheet of all these other different places that are also asking for money. So mm -hmm. we were trying to come at it in the most fair way possible that we felt comfortable with. Um, yeah. So so I don't know. I don't I don't know if I support giving the full ask, to be honest. Okay, if I may answer those two concerns. Yeah. Um, no, you're not being frugal because city council prioritized $125,000 for community grants. Mm -hmm. We used It used to be $250,000, right, that we used to say, and now we're down to one hundred and twenty-five. dollars um, And it's because of conversations like this, where we were so worried about processes that we, were na we kept cutting ourselves short, and which means that our community was receiving less and less and less. And that really scares me because we're at the same juncture. About your concern about let's just say CAB gets this money and then next year they don't, nonprofits are responsible for their budgeting. They understand that grants are one time. We're also working on an entire process. Um, and so this process for CAB for next year to apply would look would be that they would have to fill it out. They can most certainly ask for that money, but if we don't have it and there's other community needs, this new process that we're adopting, that we're going to be following, protects us from that, right? We're, we're going to have, a, it's a data-driven process that says, you know, this is X, Y, and Z, this is how we divide the funds up, this is what our um, community needs in seniors and kids and et cetera, et cetera. But this is the opportunity right now to utilize the funds that we allocated completely instead of holding on to it. Because if that just sits in general fund and it goes nowhere, it doesn't go to our, it goes, it goes to nobody, right? It gets it circled back. And that concerns me. Uh, Council Member Bertrand, I see your hand, but I do see Jamie stepped in. Are you okay with me moving to, to Jamie real quick? It looks like. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I almost forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Well, I'll keep this relatively short. I've just been hearing some discussion about the fact that our, our sort of bottom line number on our community grant program um, has gone down over the recent years. And I guess I want to just push back on that a little bit. You, you may recall that we shifted, I think it was Gray Bears, Community Bridges, and Second Harvest out of the community grant program to be funded by CDBG funding. And so that was the significant, that was the reduction. Nobody got cut in that. It was just shifting the funding to another spot. And then in addition, all of the youth funding uh, previously that was in the community grant, because we now have the youth dedicated funding, has moved somewhere else. So there hasn't been any winnowing in or reductions in the overall amount of money the city has allocated. I just want to be clear about that. Thanks, Thank Jamie. 
Yeah, and I mean, and that still doesn't change what we have on the table today that we prioritize to utilize for community okay. grant programming. Councilmember Bertram. So with that clarification that we're basically funding the same amount, um, we just have different program setups and the general fund. So um, one thing that I've realized, and that's why I went back to history, is legacy amounts greatly influence the discussion for the next year. And, you know, what I did my master's thesis on for public policy, one of the focuses was that strong community programs don't depend on grants as much as they do community focus and response to community needs and community engagement. So what we do is provide money to help them through their year. So that's one point. The other point is, and I feel strongly about this, this process for some reason resulted in fewer grants and larger asks by the, pe the people who did put in grants. Not, not all of them, but by and large, a lot of them just jumped up their grant ask quite a bit. And, you know, this is totally different than what we've used to do. You know, we, we give incremental grants so that we keep helping the program stay alive and do what their mission is in the community. Um, that's why I'd like this money to be available for our staff to work with the community and come up with the grants, grant possibilities that are still out there. There's a lot of, this, this county actually has a lot of nonprofits that do good work on all sorts of things, just like CAP. And for some reason, they weren't notified. Maybe they were staff stressed because of COVID, but I think they need a chance to put in a grant request and get some money from the city of Capitola. So we did fund all the grant requests that we got. We just didn't feel it as much as they had asked. So we are helping all the programs that ask for money. We just did not help it for as much as they asked. They could continue their programs. They will be useful for um, hopefully, uh, excuse me, the newer programs that ask for money, we, we funded those also. And part of the issue for us is we don't know how they're gonna use the money because we don't have that history. So we're hoping to find out more about it later, but that's a different program than CAP. So um, that's one reason why we held back the money, not because we're um, stingy or not because we don't want to fund things. Capital has a history of this, and I've been on this since my involvement, at least 12 years of being involved, and I stick by that. But for some year, for some reason, this year we did not get a lot of requests like last year's, and um, that bothers me a lot. So to me, there's a lot of people that have been left out of our process who in the past have made applications and used our donations to further the programs, and that bothers me a lot. So because they didn't have that chance for whatever reason, I don't want to be able to not be able to give them some money. As a matter of fact, our recommendation is so that we, we restart this program so that we could actually give these groups a chance to get funding for their programs and serve the needs of this community. Council Member Kaiser. Thank you. Um, so I, I would like to make a motion um, to sort of, sort of ride the line here and um, give CAB the, the half amount of what they're asking for. And so that'd be around the 3,500, I believe, Larry, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and that way we are still, um, keeping some of the the ideas that Jacques and I had put forth during this and um, but also giving a little bit um, as we go. So that's my motion. I'll second that. Jamie, you're raising your hand. Just to be clear, half is 3750, if that's the motion, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. I never said that math was my strong suit. <laughs> So we have a first, or a first and a second to approve $3,750. Um, I, I appreciate the two of you trying to find a middle ground. I hope that you can understand the broader picture for me and really how this is important. Even, again, $18,000 if we're to fully fund all of the programs, including CAD, is a significant amount of money at the end of the day for nonprofits. I don't want to blame staff for not doing their, uh, their part on advertising this. 
do this again, nonprofits know that when NOFAs come out, this is their responsibility. We do this every year. There's been money out, there's money put out on the table and um, I don't think it's their fault. It should be at nobody's fault, and our, not our staff, and nor is it our um, the fault of, it shouldn't be put on those who actually did the work to apply for a grant. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of staff time to apply for grants. And the fact that the people who did so, they shouldn't be um, at fault because they're the ones who, who knew about it and did the work. So um, I'm not saying I just, that, Mayor, I'm not saying anyone's at fault. Um, you know, I read all the grants. I'm, I'm not sure. I can talk to you offline about what I thought about the grants applications and what the material was that I read. But there are groups out there that for some reason, COVID perhaps, you know, because staffing is so much reduced and everyone's at home most of the time. So, you know, I don't know what it is, but this year it right. really bothered me that there weren't those number of people at the table asking for our, our support in their mm -hmm. programs. I think that's a real that's a real loss to the community in general. Okay, so then I'd like to make a friendly amendment to the motion. If within a certain timeline, our usual NOFA timeline, if the if there are not additional, again, if the funding is that left over, if it happens to be 18000 or whatever it is at the end of the day, then that you as a subcommittee circle back and that you um, you fund the, the, the folks that actually put the request in and that the money doesn't just sit there stagnant. Um, yeah, that is definitely something um, I did actually ask about this and if that is something that has been done or is like a normal procedure where typically it is not like a double <laughs> grant <laughs> throughout the year. Yeah. But I, I'm fine with that for sure because I think here we're giving the chance for people to you know, either come forward and figure out that there are grants available and then it will allow us to to beef up the grants moving forward if that money is not claimed. Yeah, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the next cycle. So we have a motion on the table for a first and a second for the um for this. I'll do a roll call and we can go um that was just my let me just back up. That was just my request for this particular item. If funding is not utilized at the end of the day, that will revisit CAB. Christina? Is that your thumbs up? I need to clarify is that you were just talking about revisiting the CAB application. Yeah, correct. Um, and so we have a first and a second for $3,750 exact to go to CAB. Councilmember Kaiser, that was your motion, and we have a second from Councilmember Bertrand. Does that sound right to the two of you? Do mean the math is correct? <laughs> okay, so let's have a roll call, please. Okay, to clarify, Mayor Brooks, uh, would you like them to? Would you like to see if your friendly amendment is accepted by Councilmembers Bertrand and Kaiser as the first and second? I'm so sorry. Councilmember Kaiser agreed. I'm, I made, I need to make sure Councilmember Bertrand, you were on board with that. that I'll is, agree with that. This is, okay. the, after the clarifications, this is for Cap. Yes, thank you. Are we all comfortable? Chloe, do you have what yes, you have? So Jamie, you're... I, I just want to Jamie? clarify... Uh, Jamie, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, Chloe, please go ahead. I, I was going to seek clarification on the motion as well. Okay. I just jumped in a little fast uh, that I can't see anyone so it doesn't help so I'm clarifying that the original motion is to fund cab for three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars and the friendly amendment to if at the end of the day upon a NOFA if there is leftover funding at the end of the evening and no one further applies the subcommittee will revisit funding CAB further. That was accepted by both Councilmember Kaiser and Councilmember Bertrand. I can do a roll call vote if you, that is correct. What did you mean by the end of the evening? There's there's two further items regarding community grants to be discussed. No, her, her friendly <laughs> amendment, my understanding. Um, Yvette, why don't you repeat your friendly amendment? Sure. Sure. So there will be 
no matter what funding that is not going to be expended no matter what decisions are made with cab and moving on with those other items that i cannot talk about there will be funding that will not be utilized that funding from what i understand is going to be going out to um, the public for a nofa that's going to go out for additional nonprofits to apply for let's say that those nonprofits apply and all of those dollars are not expended so yet there would still be leftover money so that will be in some time period like we give it two months or whatever yeah Yeah. whenever it is i would just like that you revisit cab if there's leftover funding that cab can utilize that they don't need to apply again and go through this long this process that they've already applied that they would be considered yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I mean, we we can make the effort, advertise in the newspaper, you know, do all the things that Chloe and her department does to let people know. And you know, if we don't get those applications, then we can backfill uh, wherever we can. I, in general, I don't mind that principle for every one that's applied. Yeah, I just can't talk about every other one, unfortunately. Jamie, your hand is raised. Yeah, I have a suggestion to maybe simplify this so that everyone's clear about what's happening and staff has some clear direction. We haven't made any determination about issuing another NOFA for the, for the funding for the nonprofits. So maybe at this stage, the best motion to make would be, and please feel free to correct me if I don't have it correct, is um, you're authorizing 37.50 tonight, and if at the mid-year budget there remains unspent um, funding, in the community grant program that you revisit the allocation to cap. And then if at the end of the day you end up making a motion to direct staff to redo a NOFA, we would have gotten through all that process by then. But at least then we have a date of when we know we're talking about uh, the additional funding for cap. I feel like we're saying the same thing. So sure, if that's clarifying it for staff, perfect. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate the clarification. So I will call for a vote. Is that all right, Mayor Brooks? Yes, please. Let's do this. Great. Okay. Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Kaiser. Aye. And Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you. This item passes with not so much confusion and much appreciation for the subcommittee. Thank you very much um, for hearing me out. Okay, Council Vice Mayor Story, Council Member Peterson, come on down. I was watching The Price is Right as earlier. Makes me feel that exciting. Uh, Jamie, your hand is still raised. Do you need Do you need us? Okay. I do not. I'm that good. Means no. That means no. <laughs> okay. So for this item, I'm going to be handing this over to Vice Mayor Story um, because I am an uncompensated member director on the board of the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. So I will be recusing myself on this Ma- item. And Mayor Brooks, before you mm-hmm. before you leave, may I um, make maybe make a suggestion or a request? Um, and I was wondering if the other council members would agree with me that maybe we should take item 8D uh, first before we uh, consider um, the item 8C. Um, since 8D is kind of looking at the big picture, um, and that would provide some guidance on 8C. Unfortunately, I've checked in with our attorney on this, and because of the conflict, we have to do it in this order um, because it could have weight on the decisions that are made. And um, Christina, I see that you've unmuted yourself, and you can take it over for the legal use aspect. Uh, Mayor Brooks, you've you've pretty much covered it. Uh, The safest approach from a legal perspective since there are so many conflicts here, is to consider the individual grant first and then consider the the bulk grants at the end. In other words, Vice Mayor Story, I tried. Got it. Okay. 
So I'll, I'll be excusing myself and handing over item 8C to Vice Mayor Story. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Um, let's uh, proceed then with 8C, um, the recommended action or the subject is to determine award amounts for community grants for the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. Um, and I'll ask for a staff report. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Sorry, um, I'd like to share my screen if that's okay. Um, everyone can see. Um, so this this is a part of the community grant program. Um, it is specific to the um, request from the um, Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. As uh, for those who don't have this information, the community grant program was part of the approved as part of the fiscal year 21-22 budget and included $125,000 from the general fund and $49,000 from the dedicated um, TOT uh, portion of the TOT tax for the youth and early childhood programs. Um, the basic subcommittee recommendations were for a base increase of 7% for programs funded that were funded in the last cycle in 2019-2020 for the two-year you know, cost increases. Um, additional increases for some agencies were based on program specifics and the application, the community need, and the COVID-19 impacts. Those were some of the things that were considered. Um, all funding, or even those who had not per applied before were, were uh, funded as part of the program. So the Nash Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Foundation is a, is a new applicant. Um, Mayor Brooks is uh, recused due, um, and this is being considered due to uh, remote interests. Um, the, the organization requested $10,000 for general operations. Subcommittee, after reviewing, recommended $2,000 from the general fund portion of the Community Act Program for Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. And so at this time, I believe um, Councilor Bertrand would like to um, kind of give a, kind of the overall um, process and the background for the subcommittee's recommendations, if that's okay. Muted, Jack. So um, this was a special circumstance because it's a new program, and uh, we don't have history with the Monterey Bay Marine Sanctuary Foundation. <clears throat> and so uh, it is a well-respected organization. If you look at the board, there's some rather significant members of the community, um, very wealthy individuals that can support the general uh, financial requirements of this particular program. Um, so we thought that um, a, a grant to get started to see uh, what the fund does with uh, the monies that we give. Um, in general, it's, it's not centered in Capitola, doesn't directly um, influence uh, people, residents of this community, um, but that's not the sole purpose of um, why we give grants. So we wanted to give something to them to get started. It's a new group for us, uh, never participated in our grant program before, and this would be the start of, um, I guess, a new relationship with a new community um, foundation that we're supporting. And uh, Margot, did you have any comments yourself? Hey, yeah, no, that's a great summary. Um, basically, sort of looking at this as a a jumping off point, seeing as how we didn't really have any any facts or any other grants to go off of um, from years prior with um, the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. Um, so this uh, trying to stay in line. We kind of just said a lot of this earlier, but trying to stay in line with uh, being fair and trying to make sure we know kind of where the funding is going, especially with a new a new program like this. Um, that's sort of what led us to the choices that we made. Thanks. Does that conclude the staff report? 
Yes, at this point, that's for, the, for this item, that, that concludes my staff report with the recommendation. Yeah, and, and the committee report. Thank you. Are there um, any questions from um, other council members on the report? Uh, hearing none, um, I'll, I'll ask, um, um, do we know what, what's the mission of the uh, Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Foundation? Our mission is to leave a thriving Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary to future generations by protecting wildlife and biodiversity, raising sanctuary visibility and awareness, and inspiring the public its stewards. Um, as a little comment, uh, we have a discovery center in Santa Cruz that um, does education outreach. Uh, the visitors that come to Santa Cruz, this is a a building right at the uh, foot of the wharf. Um, I was supporting uh, Keeley in one of his programs at that time, and he took me to the opening ceremony. Um, well visited, uh, tons of people come to that. And it's sort of the same mission, but it's very educational. And so there's a lot of people that can see things, uh, be educated, and also I think thousands of people go to there in, in the course of a month or definitely um, exposed. So this again, our mission is to leave a thriving Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary to future generations. And then they have activities that support that. Is there no specific objectives that are um, related to the city of Capitola? Um, well, Margo could talk about that a little bit too, but we, we felt that there's groups in this area. That's why I brought up the Discovery Center in Santa Cruz. And um, one of the, fil uh, the lenses that we were thinking about because our discussion sort of lent in the direction of how are we helping kids? And, you know, there's, you know, the Marines uh, Museum, there's this Discovery Center, there's many programs that we think we could actually fund that would probably help kids and get them involved. Um, a little side note, um, my daughter for a couple of years worked with the uh, uh, Save Our Shores and the Surf Riders group, you know, collecting samples and stuff like that to her school here in uh, Capitola. And, you know, because of that experience, uh, she got interested in the water issues. And right now she's a civil engineer working on water projects. And this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about when I'm saying we need to do things that pay it forward. Our, our youth and the families that support the, the kids that they're trying to raise need help. And it's becoming more apparent to me when I read the news and look at the reports on TV and stuff like that. Our youth is being impacted greatly because of this pandemic and the families that need support because of that, the supply needs for the kids. And part of it that a lot of people forget is just education. Education is one of the main ways that people can raise themselves out of poverty, provide a better life for themselves and for their future families if they so choose. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that, Doc. I, uh, I just have a follow-up question for staff. I was wondering, did the application uh, request um, uh, quantifiable uh, units of service or objectives related to the city of Capitola? You know, uh, my first story, I, I don't believe so. This is this this request was for uh, general operations. Um, it wasn't specific. I mean, they, they, they did say that, you know, it, it does help with tourism and, and it does serve. They had put every, you know, potentially serves all Capitola residents, but it wasn't anything specific um, to Capitola. Okay. Thank you, Larry. May uh, I answer that question a little bit, uh, Vice Mayor? Uh, sure. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you. So um, they wanted to sort of answer your question, and, and so in an indirect way, these are for general operating funds, but I was encouraged by what they said in the last sentence. Uh, they will also support staff time to search for and apply for grant funding for specific, specific education programs and resource protection efforts. And so this is what Margo and I are talking about when we say we need to find out how these programs operate and we want to know what is going to be the relationship working with them. 
So if they say they're going to use this money to help uh, do some grants, I think that we should partner with them. And this would be a great way to meet some of the needs of our youth and our community itself. All right. Thank you, John. Um, are there any other questions or follow-up questions from council members? Yeah, I see uh, Councilwoman Peterson. Go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm um, there's a lot of discussion right now about whether or not this is relevant to the city of Capitola, but because we are on the shoreline of the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, does that not pertain to us directly? And I'm not sure if this is, I, I don't mean this to be a rhetorical question, but maybe if we could just get like a thumbs up, like we are on the shoreline yes, yes. of the National Monterey Bay Marine Sanctuary, correct? Yes. Yeah. I wanted to make yes. sure I'm, I'm uh, on track with that one. Thank you. Okay. Vice Mayor, if I may, and I agree with you, Kristen, and that's why I brought forward the two examples. You know, we have the Discovery Center at the foot of the wharf in Santa Cruz, which meets, you know, probably tens of thousands of people in this area and their use, um, you know, to educate them. And also we have a children's Discovery Museum, <laughs> and then we have something in the Capitola Mall that is also focused on issues related to the current environment here that we we should support too. So th there's a lot that's immediately around us that is doing that and or something similar to them. Yeah, thank you. Um, and and uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I certainly uh, understand that we are on the Monterey Bay uh, Marine Sanctuary and uh, what goes on there deeply affects us and we care a great deal about it. Um, but this was a, a time for questions. Um, so if there are no other questions, I'll um, take it out to the public and see if any member of the public uh, wants to speak on this item. Vice Mayor Story, I do not see any attendees with their hands up, and I do not see any emails on this item. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Um, I'll bring it back to Council for further discussion and uh, possible action. Um, any Council member would like to uh, be Begin. Yeah, Councilwoman Peters. Thank you. Um, I have a couple thoughts and a, and a couple concerns on this item. So, um, I, I serve as an alternate through AMAG on the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Advisory Council, which is much different than the foundation. Um, so, which is why I'm not uh, recusing myself from this item. Um, but Part of, of being on that council is also understanding how individual jurisdictions are impacted by the things that happen within the sanctuary, including, um, you know, there was discussion about things like fishing and seal bombs, you know, thing, thing, uh, underground, uh, underwater noises that impact uh, animals and et cetera. And so I, I think that it's important that we consider that this is an issue that impacts the city of Capitola. Um, very closely because we are on the sanctuary. I think that when we're talking about work to educate kids, it's important to consider that we have a separate fund specifically for youth programs. And so considering whether or not this program deserves to be funded or, or should be funded in the amount that it's asked for based on whether or not it's educating youth is a little bit beyond the scope of this discussion because we have a whole separate fund for educating youth doesn't mean that we shouldn't fund them if they do educate youth or, or vice, vice versa, but I think that's something um, that's, that's really something we should consider. Um, and then finally, you know, I, I wasn't a part of the last conversation and I don't want to get too much into the next conversation, but I think that it is important to consider that as a new grant uh, request that we can't necessarily go on what they have asked for in the past, which is um, I, I believe what we're applying to the next item to a bunch of the, the other um, nonprofit organizations. Um, and so it's a little bit unfair to say we're just going to guess for them what they should be getting when they've never gotten anything before. Um, and again, I, I will defer to uh, legal counsel if I'm uh, crossing a line here. Um, but my thought is that in general, if we have the funding, um, we should be able to fund all of these organizations, but for right now, I'm just talking about this one, um, at least up to $10,000. And so if that's what they're asking for, I'm prepared to support that $10,000 request. Um, and, and I'm willing to make a motion to, uh, to 
approve their request for a ten thousand dollars from our from our funding in this regard um, but I'm also interested in hearing from others on the council thank you just for clarity uh, council and Peterson you're not yet making that motion to Oh, no, I, I apologize. I am. I am making that okay. motion that they've requested ten thousand dollars, and I'm making the motion to offer them the ten thousand dollars from our from our community grant program. Okay, good. Thank you for that clarification. Um, is there a second to the motion? Hearing none, for the purposes of discussion, I'll second the motion. Um, is there any further discussion on the motion? Yeah, I'd like to respond to some of the points that Kristen made and um, I think you know I checked into the organization and who's on the board and stuff like that this this is a well-funded organization this is an organization that is way and above the normal community grant funds that we support in Santa Cruz and Capitola um, I, I particularly don't want to siphon off the full ten thousand dollars to give to them with a new program. I, I I agree that they do provide probably um, an overlapping educational um, component for this community. Um, but as I pointed out, we have things in Santa Cruz that do pretty much the same. Um, so our recommendation was based on not that they were from not in Capitola or in Santa Cruz itself. It has nothing to do with that, but it's a new program we have no history with. And um, they're well funded as it is. It would take away from the available funding to our considerably lower funded groups in Santa Cruz. But let's give them a chance to see how well they do and um, go from there. Any further comments? Yes, I, um, let's see. Uh, Councilwoman Peterson, do you have your hand up? Did you want to respond? Yes, I'm sorry I'm to, to take up so much time on this item, and I'll try to make it brief. I, I just want to push back a little bit, and I apologize if anyone can hear the scooter or electric bike or whatever's happening outside of my apartment right now. But um, I just want to push back a little bit because if, if the argument here is that because we don't we don't have, or excuse me, if the argument here is that um, the people that you've seen on the board are well funded, then it doesn't match up with the argument for other grant recipients for another item um, that they're getting a specific amount or they're getting a specific amount percentage more than they did before or um, that some people didn't get to apply. So I feel like there's multiple arguments being made here. And so I, I do feel the need to push back a little bit on that. If, if the argument for this particular board is that the board members are well funded, then I would like to know, was there a review of every other board member on every other grant uh, applicant to see if they were also well funded? And if so, are we actually making an effort to ensure that each one of those boards are being funded um, appropriately based on the wealth of their board members and even then are we assuming that all of these boards are 100 percent giving boards and how much are they giving so these i feel like these are the kinds of questions that we've always wanted to ask when we're looking at our grant programs and we've agreed that we will um and then the pandemic hit and so things kind of changed so in the future i think these are exactly the kind of questions that i think that our subcommittee asked this time around that we're definitely going to want to ask in future uh, rounds is, 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 are these 100% giving boards? How much is the board giving? Um, you know, th those are important questions. But for this particular round, because we've been impacted by the pandemic, because we have new applicants, because things are so much, um, more complicated than they've been in the past and are about to be more complicated in the future, that I personally am not willing to consider the wealth of those on the board, um, as, as a de determination of how much we should be giving the program in general. Um, and, and those will be my final comments on this. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank well, you. So um, I'll wait for more uh, Councilwoman Geyser now. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I would totally remove myself from anything about any board member. I honestly have no idea who is on the board, to be honest. So that's not, that doesn't hold any weight for me. My whole position is the fact that 
we have not been in a relationship with this program ever before, and $10,000 is the highest amount that we've been asked for by anything so far. And it does not make me feel comfortable giving out $10,000 not knowing where it's going exactly. Sure, we are part of the Monterey Bay. Yes, we are, we are in the coastal line. And of course, we are part of this great county of Santa Cruz. Um, but Capitola specifically, we're not sure where this program lies or what it's doing for us. And, and the unknown is okay, but that's why we're giving a smaller amount in order to explore our relationship. Also moving forward, as I, I did say previously in our last conversation, so sorry, I'm repeating myself, but it's just this, um, we are, we will be restructuring this program and, and to go into the next time that these grants are offered and say, well, you know, you gave 10 grand last time and maybe that's not available the next time around or we're not really liking the effects of the program. That to me is a, is a large, large lump sum to have us, to have it be our jumping off point. That's, that's my, that's my approach. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, Jacques, did, did you yes. want to say something? Okay, go ahead. Yes, I do. Um, so having been on um, a grant giving, you know, a board that was expected to raise funds for uh, the, uh, achieving the mission, um, um, I had to resign because it's significant the amount of uh, time and effort to get your friends and neighbors to donate money to uh, a board. And if you don't have that kind of um, ability, and I clearly found out that this was not the right board to be on. I've been on other boards that, you know, uh, we give the prerequisite ten dollars a year so that you know we could claim that the board funds, um, partially funds the group, because it's obvious that there's just not money <laughs> available from the board members. We're just trying to run an organization. Um, so the reason why I found out that the Monterey uh, sanction group had rather well-funded boards because I was checking board members. Uh, you know, I went through these applications that took me many days to go through them. Uh, a particular interest to me was, were there any board members that were in this community? You know, I would look for that. And I'd also look to, um, you know, who were board members themselves. If I didn't know anything about the organization, a lot of these organizations I already knew about familiar with the people that are on the board, familiar, very familiar with their activities because I've been involved in this community for 30 years and engaged with quite a few of them. So that's the reason why I checked that board. And I agree with Margot. Um, you know, we don't have any history with this group. And so, you know, before I jump in, into a relationship with, you know, a group that's going to provide services for this community, I want to know something about them and how they operate. And like I said, I, I looked further and there was a, a mention there that they would work with us uh, on establishing grants to, to meet some of our goals, mutual goals. And I said, well, wow, let's see how that works. And they put it in their application. Uh, they're one of the few that um, actually said something specific that would um, be a part of Capitola if, if we chose to read the application. And so I said, well, that's, that's a great thing to read. And so let's take them up on it, but um, not for full funding. Let's see how they start with the, the money that we do give them. So that's, that's how we came to that recommendation. I think it was well thought out. All right, thank you, Jacques. Um, uh, Councilwoman Peterson, I see your hand up again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said my last comments would be my last comments, and that was inaccurate. So my apologies. I'll hold it, I'll hold it to you this time. <laughs> All right. Okay. I promise. Um, I, I just, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I appreciate your thoughtfulness on this, Jacques. You and, you and Margo both. I do not have any doubt that you've both put a lot of time and consideration into your recommendations. My concern is that I don't believe, and, and staff can correct me if I'm wrong, that I don't believe that anywhere in our grants applications, do we ask that the board uh, tell us, I, I, I think if I remember correctly, we do ask if the board is a 100% giving board, but I don't believe that we ask that the board tell us the wealth of their board members or how much their board members give. 
And so I think it's a little bit unfair that we come up with our individual uh, prerequisites for these organizations that aren't part of the actual application process that each of us individually say, well, I think all these people are wealthy and so that clearly this board has enough going for them. I think unless that's in the application, it, it shouldn't necessarily be part of, of the decision-making process. But, like I said, I can appreciate that that's something that is part of your personal consideration, and I, I respect and understand that. And I see Larry's got his hand up, so he's either going to correct or verify. And I'm almost there. Hold on. Uh, okay, so I'll, I guess my last comment is I would love if we could find a middle ground because they've asked for 10000 The recommendation was for two. If we could find a middle ground for five, six, seven, eight, I think that would be a great starting point for an organization that I think is clearly going to benefit the city of Capitola and those other coastal communities that are facing similar issues that we are as a coastal community. And as you said, Jacques is one of the, the only organizations who said, if you look at our, our application, we're willing to work with you. So I, I can't support just 2000 if if the nominating committee or if the grants committee can't support, support 10, I hope that we can find um, a middle ground. And with that, uh, Vice Mayor Story, I promise that will be the end for me. And uh, Larry, if you have clarification on anything that, or correction on anything that I've just said, uh, please feel free. Yes, Larry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, actually, we do actually ask how much the, the board contributes and what percentage of, of uh, the board members contributed during the past fiscal year, just to clarify. Just the percentage of the board or no, the actual the, amount? the amount as well. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Okay. Thank you for that uh, clarification, Larry. Uh, Jock, one last time. Yeah, I'll, I'll prepare to make a motion, and um, that's... Well, you know, a, you're making I, a substitute motion? No, I'll make a motion. We already um, have a motion and a second on the floor. Okay, I would like to make a friendly amendment. Okay, go ahead. Repeat the motion, please. Um, I, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, you want to re, um, repeat the motion for us? Yes, the motion from Councilmember Peterson is to approve the request for $10,000 to the Monterey Bay um, organization. And, uh, and I have seconded that motion, so that's the motion on the floor. Um, Jacques, do you have an amendment? No, I think I'll request a vote. Okay. Um, and um, so I'm going to um, just speak a little bit about why um, I seconded the motion and, and I support the motion. Um, one, uh, because it's uh, very much within our capability um, to be able to fund them the entire $10,000. Um, and also, uh, being a former uh, nonprofit uh, director um, and also, uh, you know, being on the city council, you know, I, I've just come to find that um, the time and effort um, to um, administer, manage, and um, follow through uh, on these small little grant amounts, um, uh, I think, just don't make it, uh, hardly make it worthwhile. Um, and also, I think that um, our, the amount that we will award should reflect our values and what we care about. Um, and I think that we all agree that we deeply care about um, the preservation of the Monterey Bay um, um, Marine Sanctuary and the wildlife that lives there. And I think that if we're going to forge a partnership um, with um, a group, and as Jacques mentioned, maybe an influential group, um, that, you know, we should make a significant contribution within the means of our capability. Um, and so that's that's why I um, am going to support the motion. And with that, I'll call for a roll call vote. Um, yes. Okay. Councilmember Kaiser. No. I'm so sorry, and I did this out of order. Councilmember Bertrand. No. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Motion fails. Um, it's a tied vote, two to two. Um, 
Uh, does anyone want to make a follow-up motion? I'll make a follow-up motion. And, um, you know, I go for compromise on this. And um, I'd like to respond to something that sort of is in the back of my mind. And I, I don't have a basic principle that the board has to be more wealthy or something like that. Um, but I do have a principle that I'd like to be able to help those who need it more. And so that sort of where I'm at because, and we didn't get into this as much as we did on the first round, but it bothered me that a lot of uh, nonprofits that have been applying did not apply this time. And I know there's a lot of groups out there that are deserving that probably more directly help people in their circumstances, mostly due to poverty. Sometimes it's, um, you know, there's a whole variety of issues, you know, you can't enumerate. This, this county itself has probably one of the largest number of nonprofits around, and it's been talked about so many times. So we'll get to this a little bit later when the larger discussion happens. But um, did you have a motion, John? Yes. So I just responded to that that sort of idea behind. So I'll go for compromise, and I would like to uh, support the grant of three thousand dollars to this foundation. I can second that. Any further discussion? Oh, I see. Um, Councilwoman Peterson. Just to keep things lively and exciting, can I? Uh, I'd, I'd like to make a substitute motion for five. Is the uh, uh, mover willing to? Uh, is there a second for the substitute motion? Or an amendment, if that's easier. If if, if the original motion maker is willing to accept an amendment from from three to five. I, I think the substitute motion would be appropriate in this okay. situation. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there a second to the substitute motion? Hearing none, I'll second the motion. Um, is there further discussion on the substitute motion? So under our rules of order, we'll take the substitute motion first. Um, so let's have a roll call vote on the substitute motion. Council Member Bertrand. No. Council Member Kaiser. Can I get a clarification on the substitute motion? It's to it's $5,000. $5, okay. Moderate Lady Sanctuary. Foundation. Okay. Thanks. Aye. Okay, thank you. Council Member Peterson. Aye. And Vice Mayor Story. Aye, and the motion passes three to one. Um, and thank you, Councilwoman Kaiser, for um, breaking us through <laughs> a, a potential impasse. Um, and thank so, you, Kristen, uh, for the substitute motion. That was uh, a very lively, lively discussion and debate. Um, and um, you know, I think we accomplished what we're meant to do is to um, arrive at compromise. With that, uh, we'll. Um, See if Mayor Brooks is ready to rejoin us. Oh, that was a nice nap. How's everyone doing? That was nice. We're exhausted. Are you? I'm a, I think I got about 30 minute nap in. So nice to see you all again. We're almost there, folks. We are on to item eight. <laughs> D determine award amounts for community grants. I think we are more ready than ever. Are we going to have a staff presentation from Larry? I'm back. <laughs> All right. Nice to see you. Okay. I, if it's okay, I'd like to share my screen. We'll kind of go over this. This is big picture one. So, okay. So this, uh, can everyone see? Okay. There we go. It's taken a little while today. I'm not sure why. Um, this is a, a presentation on the community grant program minus the two items that were just previously considered. Um, again, it was the budget for this year was $125,000 in the general fund. 
uh, 49,000 from the dedicated uh, TOT, portion of TOT for youth and early childhood. The application period this year ran from July 20th through August 23rd, 2021. Overall, we received applications from 22 agencies for 24 separate programs. Um, the total amount requested for all agencies for the, these, the, the ones that haven't already been considered was $151,000 in six months. $151,641, excuse me. Um, City Council appointed um, council members Bertrand and Kaiser for the subject team to re review all the applications and make recommendations for the full council. We talked about the, the subcommittee recommended the following, a base of 7% increase for programs that were funded um, in 2019-2020. Additional increases were made for some agencies based on the program, the need, and potential and COVID impacts. Um, also funded programs that were not uh, given awards in previous cycles. A couple other recommendations for, from, from the, the subcommittee was to request the Commission on Environment research opportunities to fund groups focused on youth environmental education and then staff to develop proposed uses within the recreation division for the remaining 19,000 in the youth and early childhood funding. I will leave it up to um, the Councilmember Bertrand and Kaiser if they would like to go in, back into the, uh, the the process and background for these recommendations. Yeah, for purposes of the public that may not have heard the earlier portions of our meeting, and I think everyone on the council has had a chance to hear a little bit of um, what Kaiser and I have said in our report. So I'll make it short, but complete. So we looked at the programs that have been um, applying for a long time, and we decided in the case of um, some of the increases, which were quite a bit more than they've done in the past, we would, instead of arguing over every single increase, uh, we would go for a 7% increase to, to cover increased expenses that most agencies have to cover. And so that would be a base start. And then as uh, Larry's report mentioned, we then went back over and looked at some of the programs and it was in terms of, is this a very needy program, especially in this time? Is it um, perhaps impacted by COVID? Does it have particular impact to Capitola? And so that resulted in some adjustments, um, just to reiterate, so you don't have to look at the uh, um, spreadsheet. Uh, we did, um, instead of 7%, we went to uh, 3,500 for senior network services. Um, then for um, senior council project scout, a uh, program I'm very familiar with, we funded it 5,000. And for the volunteer center uh, program, I'm, I've volunteered there for many years, um, we decided to do 5,000 for that too. So we didn't follow the 7% for everything. This, oh, excuse me, and there's some new requests, sorry. 1,000 for the Arts Council, which um, child participated in for many years, and 2,000 for NAMBI. A uh, little disclosure, I've been on the Tulsa Advisory Board, um, did not operate with NAMBI, but, but I attended many of their programs. So I was very familiar with them too and um, largely on mention what this group does. If you have a mental health issue in your family, they're very appreciative of NAMI. Um, so with the, um, the amounts that we gave, there's uh, a surplus and we recommended that um, this go back to staff and focus on uh, finding groups and opportunities to uh, provide issues for youth environmental education. Uh, this can be expanded by uh, city council recommendations. But the main thing that bothered me in particular, and Kaiser could talk about this from her perspective, was not, not many groups participated in answering uh, for the grants this time. Um, and that was particularly bothering us, and there's no way to know why that's the case. Um, as mentioned in earlier discussions, uh, groups know that 
we do this cycle every year. Um, we've had some hiccups because of COVID. Maybe that turned them off because uh, we pull back monies for city services that we don't normally do. Um, and um, that was a requirement to keep the city going. So um, maybe people don't have staff available. Uh, you know, they're at home trying to keep the organization going. And these are organizations that are by and large not funded very well to begin with. So being that as it may, um, this would hopefully give us another chance to reach out to the community and um, give these organizations a chance uh, to apply for uh, grant resources from Capitola. And uh, uh, Councilperson Kaiser, uh, I think you have an individual perspective on this, and would you like to add more? Sure, thanks. Um, I, not to keep repeating myself, um, but I think our approach um, here, for the most part, was trying to start um, start the calculations in a fair way, and that's sort of what landed us on that whole 7% um, jumping off point, and then, of course, taking other things into consideration, either if um, we've had experience um, with the program itself, um, if we've had, you know, a longstanding relationship, things like that, um, and, and looking forward into the future, I we will be sort of restructuring this, this type of grant program, so um, creating sort of a safer zone for us to begin grants moving forward and not have, um, you know, an, an exorbitant amount of um, money that is sort of expected or being requested of us um, based on, or just not based on anything, but just to keep keep us in the clear a little bit when it comes to um, giving out grants. Um, yeah, I think Jacques pretty much said it well, and I'm sure you've all heard my spiel already, but I appreciate your listening, and yeah, if you guys have questions, um, let me know. Oh, for a second I was waiting for Vice Mayor Story to go. <laughs> um, okay, that's back did. to me. <laughs> uh, let's go, let's take it to questions. Questions for Council, Vice Mayor Story. Thank you, Member. Um, I guess I wanted to start with um, uh, you know, a similar question that I had on the previous item, and that is um, that our application for these particular service providers um, solicited um, their um, quantifiable objectives or units of service. Um, and they identified the cost for service, and they identified uh, the um, units of service provided to Capitola residents. If I may, Mary. Um, I, well, Morgan and I went through each one. It took me a couple of days. It might have taken her longer because she's working full time. So um, I, I didn't see a lot of that. Um, Having been on the senior council and um, most recently the senior advisory group, um, I know it's very difficult for the organizations to uh, take staff time away from running their own organizations to detail um, statistics. Um, if you're a government program that uh, responds to government grants like senior grants to the um, um, you know the various programs that come from the federal government. You you do have to you do are you are required to collect extensive information. Um, but a lot of the programs that we fund, which are basically, you know, they just don't have the money to do that. They're pretty much shoestring to, to many extent and focus on providing their services. They don't have that. So in a way, it's hard to expect them to do that. <laughs> <laughs> because it takes away from their mission, but I, I didn't see many examples of that being detailed in the applications. Ms. Nice Murray's story, was that enough of an answer for you? Um, yeah, yeah, it's an answer. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised to hear that we don't solicit um, that kind of, of um, quantifiable objective. 
um, of units of service for Capitola residents in our um, grant application. But I, I guess I, what I'll follow up with, I assume that, that the committee was satisfied um, that these particular service providers um, um, were um, providing sufficient benefits to the residents of Capitola um, uh, in order to, I mean, award them any amount of money. Uh, to award them any amount of money, you have to have some uh, confidence that um, there's going to be a return and benefit uh, to the residents of Capitola. Um, and with that, I, I will ask, what 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 is the, the uh, uh, acronym NAMI? What does that stand for? Oh boy, I forgot so long ago. Is, is, is well, I'm, 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 I will look that up for you. Yeah. It's the National Alliance of Mental Illness. Right. Okay. So it's basically, you know, families that have mental ill um, members, and um, it's almost a self-support group. It's um, very different than a professional organization. But okay. um, and to answer Sam, you know, a lot of it was um, examples like stories, and you know, they'll they'll talk about how they've aided someone in capital. And this is generally yeah, we. I don't think Capitola, throughout the history that I've known, has actually required detailed statistics. Um, there is some mention in the application of how many people in Capitola they may have helped, and you know they do mention that, but it's it's not very detailed. Okay, um, um, and maybe this question, if I may, one more question, Mayor, um, and maybe this is uh, better suited to staff. I, in that after these awards that it results in a, a, a contract with these service providers? That is correct. And then uh, they're expected to report out um, either intermittently or at the end of the year on their performance um, and um, services provided to the, in Capitola? Just generally, um, Generally, uh, we request the annual um, uh, the, the annual report from the agency, and they do address specifically, um, you know, how many uh, Capitola residents they they impact with their programs. Right. Thank you. Okay. So we're at questions still. Um, I do not see any questions further from council. Um, Jamie, are you able, my question, so just for forthcoming, just for being more prepared, are you able to pull up the spreadsheet with the dollar amount of the request again and what is being asked? And can you also include what was approved um, for the prior item so we can see how much is left and when we get to those conversations? Can you get that prepared for us while we go to public comment? Yep. We've got it all ready to go. Great. Okay. So we're going to go to public comment. I'll open this up for public comment. If you'd like to make a comment, send an email now to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Or to speak, please raise your hand now by clicking on reactions, then clicking raise hand in your Zoom application, or by dialing star 9 or 6 on your landline or mobile phone. Our moderator will unmute you and you will have three minutes to speak, and we have the timer up there to help. Okay, let's go to Larry. So at this, this is the time for, for those who wish to speak on this item, correct, Mayor Brooks? Okay. So I've got Eduardo Santana. Yeah, thank you. Welcome back, Eduardo. Thank you for right. your patience. Go for it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for uh, letting me talk again. So, um, uh, again, um, you know, it's great to see you all. Um, my name is Thor Santana, and I'm the program manager for Project Scout. We have been providing free tax services for seniors, disabled, and low-income families and individuals in the city of Capitola for many, many years now. And I obviously want to thank you for your consideration of our community grant request. And, uh, again, just want to give you a quick example of the work that we do. Uh, we uh, recently assisted uh, Mr. H. He's a 60-plus uh, client who um, was assisted by, a, by Scout before October 15th. 
um, he wanted to uh, uh, do his taxes so he could uh, qualify for the $600 uh, state stimulus. Uh, he's a live-in in-home supported service provider in ca- that lives in Capitola. And not only did he qualify for the $600, but also for an additional $78 to the state's earned income tax credit. He was so excited that he actually went back home and looked for W-2s from prior years. He brought us back to his 2019, and we were able to get him another $108 to the earned income tax credit for California. For somebody like him, this money makes close to a 20th of his income for the year, money that keeps him out of financial jeopardy, which costs the city less in services, and this same money will mostly be spent on capital proper, invigorating our local economy. It's a win-win any way you look at it. When asked what he might do with that money, Mr. H uh, showed me his uh, glasses and he stated how he'd been waiting to get some new ones for a while. Um, this is just one uh, quick and simple story of many uh, clients that we've assisted in Capitola. As of today, we've assisted 97 for the year. Um, we at Project Scott are very proud of providing services and being part of the support mechanism for maintaining social economic growth for somebody like Mr. H, or for the whole city. Uh, with your kind support, Scout will continue providing services to seniors, disabled, low-income families, and individuals in the city. I truly appreciate the chance to speak tonight on Project Scout's behalf and want to thank you again for your continued support. Lastly, our ask was of, uh, initially was of $15,000. Uh, we, um, we are actually being recommended for 5000 I really hope that you might consider up in that amount to support the great work that we do and so we can support more in the in the community. Thank you so much um, and have a good night. Thank you very much. Anyone else, Larry? Um, let's see. Mayor Brooks, I do not see anyone else with their hands raised to talk on this item and I am Looking to see, I do not see any um, public comments on this item. Okay. Give it a second. We'll bring it back to council then for further discussion. And if Jamie, you could pull up that spreadsheet, that would be really helpful. And Larry, we'll give it one more second while that comes up if there's anyone who's emailing right now. I do not see any other emails on this this time. Okay. So go ahead and close public comment and bring it back to council to discuss the staff recommendation from our sub or our subcommittee recommendation. And in front of us we have the request in the item line item E or excuse me, column E and the subcommittee recommendation in I. And to be clear, this line up here, line four, 8,700, that is the two previously authorized grants. So for a line, um, for items D and C, you've made that adjustment. Is that what we're looking at here? Correct. Okay. So let's bring it to council. Council member Peterson. Thank you. Um, I, I first want to share that I'm very appreciative of Council Member Kaiser and Council Member Bertrand for being part of this subcommittee that, or being the subcommittee to, to determine how we should be spending these funds. Um, back in, I want to say it was maybe 2018, um, because it was myself and, and Council Member, um, Council Member Bothorf at the time, um, who was still on the council, and he and I were tasked to, to do this then. And at the time, we were looking at how things were going to change in the coming grant cycle, and it wasn't going to be the way it is now. Um, but then COVID hit, and so we didn't get to change our whole process of how we were going to equitably distribute our funds and, and what our priorities would be and all this fun stuff. So um, things got, got really blurred and really difficult. And so I want to first thank you, uh, say thank you to Council Members Kaiser and Bertrand for taking on this incredibly difficult task. Um, and 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 then I want to share 
that moving forward as we come out of the pandemic, I hope that we will still go into a new model of looking at an equitable distribution of our funding, how we're basing it on our priorities as a city, et cetera, et cetera. And so in my opinion, this may be the very last time that we can ever just give people what they're asking for or what they're asking for up to a certain amount. And I've heard, you know, from, from the other discussions that I was just a part of that there is concern about setting kind of a, a high bar and then next time telling people we can't meet that bar again. But the way that I'm looking at it is this is the last time we may be able to, to meet that bar because from here on out, we're going to have a very, hopefully, we're going to have a very specific process for how we distribute these funds that won't allow us to just say, well, this is what you asked for, so we'll give it to you because we're going to have these different um, ways of looking at it than we are doing now. And so, um, you know, with, with that being said, I, I like the idea of the remaining youth and child funding um, potentially uh, going to our recreation program to determine how to use it. I would ask that if we move forward as a council that those recommendations come back to us, that it's not just staff says this is what we're going to do and then that's it. Um, I trust our staff. They're incredibly competent. Every one of our, we have amazing staff and they're all amazing at what they do, but I would like to see what they're recommending. Um, if we're going to leave the remaining of that funding um, to their discretion. Um, otherwise, I would say the asks that have been made of us, because I do believe this is the last time that we will be able to just say, this is what you've asked for, we can give it to you. I think some of the requests are pretty high. And to Jacques' point, some people didn't know to ask for more than they got before or didn't know to apply. But I do think that anyone who has asked for up to $10,000 should get what they asked for. And anyone who asked for more than $10,000, we should cap it at 10. So I see that there's maybe two programs that ask for 15. I think maybe we should cap that at 10. But even if we do that, I believe that brings us to what? 70, my math, I'm not, I'm not great at math. But uh, I think it's about 80,000 if I'm if I'm doing math correctly, that if everyone gets what they ask for up to $10,000 or $10,000 if they ask more to that, then it's about 80,000. Um, we're about to find out how bad at math I really am because I see the real time math happening. Oh, OK, well, I was way off. But, uh, I, you know, I wanted to recommend that, that everyone get what they're asking for up to the $10,000 mark. Hold off a second here, Councilmember oh, okay. Peterson. There's, there's something's going on. Okay. And this is and where that's the glitch. City manager, <laughs> a glitch in his matrix. <laughs> This is what happens when people who aren't good at, oh, okay, I was close. I wasn't as far off as I thought I was going to be. Okay, so it was almost a little more than 80,000. Um, it's about 96 with the previous awards that we just gave. There we go, yep. So, so when we add those in, and our total budget was what, 125? I believe, yeah, the previous awards are already at. So with the with the previous awards, it's about okay. So yeah, okay. So I was really close, eight thousand. Okay, I'm I'm proud of my math skills right now. All right. So um, I think that because this is the last time we may be able to do this, that we should offer what people have asked for up to ten thousand um, dollars. I personally, and this is my pers you know personal request, is that the one of the things that I've cared very much about for my entire time on the council is getting uh, youth and young adults involvement in politics and government. And I know that Cabrillo College is now running a local government fellowship program. And I would like to also suggest that we give $10,000 to that program as well. And then to Council Member Bertrand's uh, point once again, is whatever's left over, whatever this remaining is here, um, if we need to issue an additional NOFA or if we want to offer an opportunity for the Commission on the Environment to look at environmental education, then we can do that. 
but at least we would know that we had given all of these grant recipients, uh, me, all these grant applicants, um, what they had asked for, for the most part, um, and, and would still have some remaining. So I know that was a little bit of a time with the path involved, that's not my strong suit, but um, I'll, I'll leave it at that for the time being. Can't make any promises that that's my last comment this time, but for the time being, those are my comments. Thank you. Okay. So let's leave that up there. Vice Mayor Story. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Brooks. Um, I guess I want to start by just recognizing, um, you know, that we've been all through a very, you know, difficult year and a half. Um, and, you know, and even in that period, um, in 1920, um, we eliminated all uh, community program grants um, directly. Um, so a lot of our community partners have you know, fallen behind during that period. Um, and I think that we should support the ones that have come forward um, to the extent um, that we can. Um, I also, I mean, to me, this is a, a matter of providing uh, social service infrastructure uh, for the residents of Capitola. Um, and um, I have confidence that the committee has identified the organizations that are capable of doing that um, and that they will um, serve the residents of Capitola. Um, I also feel that, you know, coming out of this pandemic and the uh, economic collapse from it, uh, that we should be um, trying to do uh, what we can and to the extent of our capability uh, to uh, help uh, maintain jobs uh, in our county uh, and jobs that are directed in the service sector um, and many of the services that, that these organizations provide. Um, so um, with that, I mean, I, I would have gone as far as um, funding uh, the uh, requested amount because we are capable of doing that um, um, and have neglected the, the nonprofit sector uh, during the course of the pandemic. And I understand not completely, but it has not been what it has uh, in the past. Um, so uh, with that, um, I certainly, um, would support uh, Councilwoman Peterson's uh, uh, recommendation. Um, and I, I guess I would go as far as uh, making her recommendation uh, up into a motion. Um, I'll second that. And also, and Jock, I understand your concerns about maybe organizations that were unaware because of the circumstances. And, and I, even with this, I. I am completely opening, open uh, to uh, going out to another round if that's what um, we need to do. But I think that we should do what we can for those organizations that have come forth and are continuing to serve our residents, um, um, you know, with the services that they provide. So, thank you. Councilmember Peterson. Thank you. And I just wanted to confirm because I um, had had kind of a recommendation, but I didn't make a motion. So I wanted to confirm if council member, if, if uh, Vice Mayor Story's motion included the um, early childhood and youth programming funding. Because my, my initial intent was to um, fund all of these grant recipients, including these early childhood programs, up to $10,000 based on what they requested. And so I just wanted to confirm that your motion includes those programs as well as the others that come from the general fund. Yes, it did, and including the Cabrillo Scholarship Program. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I second it already. Okay, so we have a first and a second. Um, we're seeing the map right before our own eyes. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> this is so nice. Um, what I would like to add is that we have received funding, um, a grant funding for tobacco advocacy, and we're going to be partnering, or we are partnered with the SoCal School District, and we are uh, working with the police department, SoCal School District, and myself, and 
on creating what's called the, a teams kind of teaching teams model, and we're going to re be recruiting 10 middle schoolers to um, work on tobacco prevention and teaching that to their peers. I would like to ask that $1,000 be set aside as um, we have to figure out what the legal part of it, but like a $100 stipend or $100 gift card for each student that participates in the tobacco prevention program. We can't do it through the tobacco grant funding, unfortunately, So we, but we could use it through our dedicated children's fund. So I'm wondering, Vice Mayor Story, if you would be um, fine with that amendment to include youth uh, tobacco grant dollars up to $1,000. Well, I'm, I'm fine with that um, um, amendment. Um, but uh, just I, I, I noticed that uh, with, while Jamie was doing the, the math there that we're a little overspent on the youth uh, programming um, and still underspent on the general fund. Um, is uh, just is the intent to uh, maybe transfer uh, from the general fund that remaining are the needed three thousand one eighty five in the youth programming. Vice Mayor Story, so that is an option for the council. Um, right now, the numbers show us thirty six uh, thirty six thousand eight hundred dollars to the good on the general fund side, but three thousand dollars in the whole on the ECYP side. So if we shifted, say, one grant for O'Neill Sea Odyssey over, that would take care of that. Okay. Well, I, I would just recommend to the council that we approve that to have us all um, you know, stay within our relative budget. Thank you. And one clarification, I know that in the initial suggestion for motion from Councilmember Peterson, she was talking about um, getting a presentation from RAC about funding. Under this model, I don't think we would have ECYP funding to direct to RAC. Is that correct? Is that everyone's understanding? Yeah. So there would be no extra funding to go to Parks and Rec at this time under this particular model. Um, so the motion on the table is to approve what we see before us with the um, with the caveat that the deficit in the early childhood education will be supplemented with the remaining balance of the uh, regular community grant dollars. Is that all agreed? That's what we have as a motion for Vice Mayor's story and the Second, Councilmember Peterson, is that who's second? I'm sorry, Councilmember yes, Bertrand, you're the second. Yeah, Are you okay with, with that? You. Yes, I am. Okay, so let's just make sure those numbers all look accurate. We were going to move everything up to ten thousand dollars. The, and then my last just kind of question is that for the remaining dollars, the twenty-three thousand or so, twenty-two thousand that will be. Um, the remaining from the community grant fund will go out to the public again in a new cycle for this year. Is that correct? I think that would need to be part of the motion. Okay, let me just make sure. And then, um, and I'll, I can make that amendment to that motion or somebody else can. Um, but also what I would like to remind folks is that if we do not get people to apply for that total amount, may I make the suggestion instead of there's nothing to backfill, so may I make the suggestion that that goes to Parks and Rec, whatever is left over. So that will be my motion, my amendment to the motion on the table is that the remaining balance of uh, the community grants will go out to the public for um, the application grant cycle if there's anything left over in that process, the remainder would go to Parks and Rec. Well, Sam is that clear enough that, motion for staff? <laughs> okay, Jamie, is that clear enough of a process? Is that? I think it's clear. So what I'm hearing uh, council suggest is, is that they're get, we're going to have about $23,000 left over, and you, you're asking us to go out and do another NOFA. Mm -hmm. And is this just an open NOFA for any community grant recipient? For new. For new, 
new recipients. Okay, and then what we would do is, is we would either come back to the council with several applications to consider funding, or if not, the funding would roll into the rec division. Or, and I'm open for conversation, or we just give it all to Parks and Rec now. That's something else we could talk about, too. Uh, Council Member Kaiser. Yeah, thanks. I had a question. So we're adding new recipients on that have not um, requested any grant funding, nor have they filled out any of the required forms or anything like that. Will they have to do that, or is this, we're just kind of giving that out? We're just going to give it out. The Youth Tobacco Grant isn't really a nonprofit. It's an internal process that we have with our own agency. So that's not, it's not something that they could text. There's no they to apply. But the Cabrillo Scholarship, you know. And they're not a nonprofit either, from what I understand yeah. from the communications. It's an agreement that's countywide to support um, people coming to work for the city in an internship. So that's really, we would be paying interns. So to be clear, my understanding of Council Member Peterson's suggestion on that was actually it would be funding that would go to the Cabrillo um, nonprofit. And forgive me, I don't oh, have the name it? correct. Who would then be is fundraising to create a public service fellowship program um, that would be an ongoing public service fellowship program that would fund people who are studying fields who wanted to enter public service and getting internships with the city of Capitol, the city of Santa Cruz, the city of Watsonville down the road. Well, there you have it. My apologies, Council Member Kaiser. I was wrong about that one. Okay. Vice Mayor Story. Yeah. On the topic of going out uh, with a new, new NOFA, um, and, and one, I wanted to ask for clarification. Uh, Mayor Brooks, you mentioned it would only be for new applicants. Um, you mean new in the sense that never applied or new in the sense that they're not part of this current round of NOFA? Yeah, I, I uh, thank you for, for asking that clarifying question. The re the new would be new, the folks that did not get any money from this particular round. They would be, because Council Member Bertrand kept bringing up that he, he believes that n not enough people had the opportunity to apply. There wasn't, there was some sort of miscommunication out there within the nonprofit world and that folks just didn't have that opportunity. And so I was thinking of, of that in that sense for folks who are not receiving funding this round could apply in the next round. So whoever else is out there, I think there's like 800 nonprofits in the county. So um, any of those other folks. The yeah. other suggestion I made was to not put that on staff because that's a lot of time and effort and work. We originally had talked about giving, the subcommittee also talked about giving money to the Parks and Rec Department, maybe, to, and Jacques and Councilmember Kaiser had brought up funding kid programs, maybe that's easier just to give them the 23000 and help them support all of their programs, the after school programs, their, everything that they do. I'd be open to hear what your thoughts are on that, Vice Mayor Story or anyone else. Well, I, I I guess I struggle a little bit with requiring staff, and I'll go through out um, from the committee uh, to go through another round of, of applications. Um, and with that, I guess I would defer to them if that's what they want to do. And and, uh, yeah. and if they do, I certainly want, wouldn't want to stand in the way of that. Um, and then, but it. For twenty-three thousand dollars, I mean, it, it hardly seems like enough money to uh, put out as a um, uh, you know, grant uh, award. And um, so, I, guess I would be inclined to just give it parts and rest and uh, have them use it as part of their program. Council Member Bertrand, your thoughts? Yeah, um, I think I'm in concurrence with Sam. Um, you know, I am cognizant of uh, staff time and, you know, the amount of money would be, you know, not as 
attractive and you know how many people would apply would probably widow it down to shares so I think that would um, save staff a lot of time and um, what um, Park and Rex under Nikki comes up with I think as requested earlier that would come back to um, City Council to um, review and vote on um, but I think there's a number of possibilities there that are already on the back burner ideas that you know just haven't been brought forward um, when I talked to Scott and others at the uh, school district across the street from me um, I know they're excited about moving forward and you know those ideas that they're excited about I think this would help realize I'd like to hear from Nikki though I don't know if she's ready so maybe that's not fair but uh, maybe she has some comments in this regard. She may not be here. Sorry. It's a late night. Yeah, we'll <laughs> there. <laughs> um, I, and Nikki, I think the question is, is there a need? Could you use it? Yes, I do. I, oh. I, I feel confident that we would be able to find good uses for, for that fund. Great. Okay, so I've been willing to make a friendly amendment to whatever the heck is on the table now it's getting late I'm getting tired um, so I believe the motion on the table is to approve what is in front of us um, and that the amendment would be to distribute the remaining dollars to the Parks and Rec Department Chloe does that sound right Yes, that's what I have. As I can't see what is in front of you, but um, as long as it also includes the Cabrillo program and the tobacco, as discussed, that is what we have in the motion and the amendment. Okay. So this was Sam Story's motion. Sam Story, Vice Mayor Story. Okay, and Council Member Bertrand. I accept the, mo uh, the amendment, and I appreciate the City Council's a participation in this discussion such that we got to this um, it's partially compromised and it's partially new ideas so I think we've achieved a good project and I hope everyone votes for it okay so just for clarity that we're going to be where the motion is to approve what's on the screen today some dollars will be moved over to from the community grants to the the early childhood program to offset those costs whatever is left over goes to the Parks and Rec Department that is the motion from Vice Mayor Story and a second from Council Member Bertrand. May I have a roll call, please? Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Kaiser. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Okay, this item passes unanimously. Thank Mayor? you to our step. Yes. Madam Mayor, may I make a last comment? Please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think Margo and I appreciate uh, the many people on the City Council that uh, thanked us for our uh, work on this committee. And um, it, it, you know, it's hard when you come up with a recommendation and you feel, you know, pretty um, aligned with it because you spent time trying to come up with uh, reasons that seem to make sense at the time, but you're only two people. And so I appreciate um, everyone else on the city council for um, what you've said and the comments that I think were well-meaning and well thought out on, on your parts. And I, I accept that as part of the uh, conversation in a democracy. Um, my second comment is I think we need to be proud of ourselves because I've seen many efforts and committees in this regard that have made this effort. It, it, it is hard to do because there's so many things you want to see happen. Uh, the resources are limited and you, you get entwined perhaps with your own way of looking at things. So we've achieved something that I think going back probably 16 years, the city council has tried to address. And I believe, um, We've set the stage for a discussion that will start next year and coming up with a new way of approaching this that I hope is principal and meets the needs of capital residents, uh, particularly and at large because they live in this area. So thank you very much again. 
Well said, Council Member Bertrand. Okay, for our last item on the agenda tonight, this is item E, 8E, consider an ordinance adding 9.62 film permits to Capitol and Municipal Code because everybody wants to vi re record our beaches and put us <laughs> in the movies and make us super rich so we can give them out to the community grants programs, right? right. Okay. What do you have, Jamie? All right. Can everyone hear me and see my screen? Great. I will try to get through this relatively quickly here. Um, first off, so the city of Capitol has issued what we've called film permits ever since I've been with the city. Uh, the process goes back, I think, at least to 2006, maybe even earlier. We usually get about four to six requests a year for filming. Most of them are relatively minor. Often it's just a photo shoot on the beach with a couple models and a photographer. But we have had some major motion pictures who've come to town and wanted to do filming. Historically, the city has issued business licenses for um, film permits, uh, for film activities. Uh, however, business licenses are non-regulatory in that there's limited ability for the city to deny issuing someone a business license or to put specific conditions on a business license. So, for example, if someone wanted to open a hardware store and they came in for the business license, the business license isn't the way to control their hours of operation. We do that through a planning permit and conditions of approval. The business license which is set out in 2006 in Resolution 3532, says that the city manager may charge $3,000 or less per day uh, at city manager's discretion for movie, commercial production, photo shoots, or similar. The city adopted an internal uh, administrative policy back several years ago, maybe about 10 years ago, to provide more guidance to that relatively broad language that's in the um, business license code. And as examples of what's in the internal guidance document, we set out basically a fee structure that looked like for a crew of three or less, it was 100 bucks per day. For a crew of 10 or more, it might be $500 per day. And for nonprofits, the rates were significantly lower. That's what we've been doing for the last ever, basically. But that's not the best practice. The best practice is that the uh, California government code allows cities to adopt um, a, I guess it's the California Uniform Film Permit Act authorizes local jurisdictions to adopt a specific ordinance to regulate the filming industry. Uh, and the ordinance then would allow the city to both deny or condition specific asks for film permits. So the proposed ordinance that's in front of you this evening, uh, I apologize, the screen, everybody in the screen covers up the slide. I can't see it. So there we go. Um, so the proposed ordinance would let us reg regulate commercial filming. Uh, it includes any filming where anyone involved in the filming is getting paid for their work. There's an exemption for news purposes, so we don't try to get a KOVR when they're filming out in front of City Hall to get a license. Uh, activities that take place in the studio or activities that take place on a, a private property over the course of a single day. So that is, if you were to host a, um, a family get-together at your house and you hired a professional photographer, you be, that wouldn't be subject to the film permit license. Now, if you were to turn your house into the real-world Capitola film set site, then you would need to get a film permit ordinance, film uh, permit from the city. Uh, also in the ordinance is that the city council would establish fees. We would put those in the fee schedule. There's just an application processing fee that really can't be beyond the city's cost to actually issue the permit. And the ordinance allows the city to uh, be reimbursed for the use of city property or services. Um, at this time, we're not proposing any change to the business license requirement, uh, but we would be updating I-40 to uh, make sure that there's not really a significant change to what people are actually paying for their overall permit from the city. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, the ordinance uh, allows the city to put conditions about the time, the place, the manner of the filming activity, and also requires somebody to name the city as um, indemnified and uh, as an additional insured. So 
so that we aren't carrying liability associated with filming activities. Where we would go from here this evening is, is if you do approve, uh, we would approve the first reading of an ordinance today, tonight. Uh, the next step would be to submit the ordinance to the California Film Commission, uh, which like the California Coastal Commission, has the opportunity to review and comment on these local ordinances. And then we would bring back any feedback from the California Film Commission to a second reading uh, of the ordinance once we got that feedback. And then the last step would be to be updating the fee schedule to add the film permit fees. So the recommended motion this evening is to approve a first reading about of the ordinance, waive title, uh, or title only, waiving further reading, and I'm available for questions. All right. Um, my question is, what's the real world? No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, Council Member Bertrand, do you have your hand raised? No. Okay. Any questions from Council? Okay, we'll take this to public comment. This is your opportunity to email us at public comment. I lost my paper. I should know it by now. At ci.capitola.ca.us or to speak, raise your hand by clicking reactions down below, then, or by dialing star nine on your landline mobile phone. Our moderator will un unmute you, and you will have up to three minutes to speak. Mayor Brooks, I do not see any attendees wishing to speak on this item, and we don't have any uh, emails on this item. Okay, let's bring this back to council for further discussion and a vote. Hmm. Council Member Bertrand, I believe you were going to say something. Council Member Peterson? I'll uh, move approval of the recommended motion as shown on the screen. I can second that. I have a first from Council Member Peterson and a second from Council Member Kaiser. May I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Okay. This item passes unanimously. We're now going to move on to our last item, which is adjournment. Thank you so much, everybody, for all of your hard work and your patience through tonight's uh, agenda items. We will see you next time. Enjoy your Halloween. Go out to the State Street Park to enjoy the outdoor movie, and we'll see you next time. Bring all your extra candy that you don't give out to Chloe's office. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Bertrand. <laughs> We could eat it for the rest of the year. One piece at a time. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Goodbye.